They have been the biggest issue for Boston College football this season. On today's show, I'm going to get into what's going on with this offensive line. Is it fixable? Where do they go from here? And kind of give you my two cents on where this unit's going to go for the rest of the season. All this and more on today's show. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On BC. I'm your host, AJ Black. Thank you for making Locked On BC your first listen every morning. We are your team every day. All right. For today's show, we're going to just dive in completely into the offensive line. Look at the issues that have been going on with the Eagles. Talk about how they fix it, what's going on, and and and, and where, where what's some realistic expectations for this unit going forward. Now, before we get into this, I'm not making excuses here, folks, but one thing that struck out to me about this offensive line and just the team in general was where this team would be if they had last year's schedule. And yes, you want to play challenging teams, but don't you agree that if BC started with UMass and Colgate, they'd be two and oh, the offensive line would have had their feet underneath them a little bit more, had some time to kind of feel some success and be in better shape for their third game in the season. Just feels like the years got kind of flip flopped here because I think last year's squad could have done better against what we have here, but that's not for here. And now we're talking about this offensive line. And I mean, the stats are, the stats are, are mind boggling. If you look at them, BC is dead last in the, in the country in yards rushed. I think they have 36 or 46 yards total. They're averaging less than a yard to carry. They've also had 46 pressures, which is the most in the entire country. Now, those two numbers themselves are absolutely deal breakers with how this offense is going to continue to grow. You can't go out there and have your quarterback hit. I think Mitch brought it up with uh, Mitch Wolf, our our co-host on some days that BC had 50% of their uh, dropbacks. Phil Dracovic was rushed. And honestly, felt like more than that, you know, when you're, when you're watching it, but that was the, that's what the numbers were. That's what, 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 um, you know, bear it out. And that second game now what's where, where's this offensive line at right now? It, it's at a crossroads because there's two different things that are concerning about this group. One is that you want them, you want to see them develop. You want to see them take that next step. And there's guys that are at different levels that you want to see get to serviceable or good, but they're no, most of them are nowhere near that right now, except for Ozzy Trapillo, who's hurt. I and mean, that's our second issue with this offensive line is that we don't have any of the guys out there that are two of the guys that are supposed to be starters are not out there right now. And that's Trapillo and Kevin Klein. Now Trapillo, as I said on yesterday's show, uh, Halfley believes should be back again with NF uh, college football coaches. What does that mean? Does that mean he will be back? Will he not be back? We don't know. Uh, but it was an injury sustained last week at, during practice. Uh, and he found out that later in the week that Trapilla wasn't going to play. So the first issue you have is you don't have enough offensive linemen to even uh, put five serviceable guys out there because Trapilla was serviceable. He, you know, he had a couple bad sacks at the end of that Rutgers game, but I think he's a guy that will take some logical steps forward. On top of that, you had Kevin Klein, who's now on crutches. We don't know what's going to go on with him. But to me, crutches is not a good sign. <laughs> I mean, is he gone for the year? Is he gone for a couple of weeks? Whatever the case is, he's out for a while. You have Drew Kendall, who Mitch Wolf was just talking to me and said, you know, Kendall <laughs> uh, is struggling. And, and I agree with him. Like there's been so many different plays. that If you go back and watch, he's not he's missing assignments. And that's scary. That's, that's, that's some uh, basic offensive line issues that BC is, is fighting with right now. uh, If you're, if you're doing things like that. And then I don't want to bash this kid because I hate getting on here and bashing a kid, but Jack Conley, no matter where they play him has struggled. He has struggled, struggled, struggled. And it's to the point with him. You have to wonder why he's still out there. I know they don't have enough healthy bodies to do much of anything, but Halfley really has this kid's back. I actually, I can say that like as much as, as, as the fans really can see that he's struggling, 
Jeff Halfley, his coach has got his back and that say that, uh, you know, do what you will there. And Finn Durstein, you know, as a, a, a was he a grad student at this point? He is what he is at this point. He's, he's okay. Nothing's nothing big. So you have these first five games and I go back to some of the scheme stuff and I am not a schemes guy. Um, I am more of, you know, just watching and hearing what people say and kind of getting a, a feel. Uh, but Halfley says that they need to simplify things. Basically, they're going to try to break it down and make it not complex for this offensive line. And I mean, that's, I, that's what you got to do. I mean, you know, I'm not sure in, in Mitch could probably tell us more later about like, what the schematic things that they're doing, you know, they're probably doing a lot of pull blocking and zone stuff, but I'm not, I, that's not my cup of tea. If they're doing that and they just need to get to simple stuff, this is the week to do it. You know, they have Maine on their schedule for a reason. I wish it was the first game, but it's not. This gives them a chance to have some success and to find out what they can do. This is, it's like a, it's a simulated practice, basically, you know, like, Maine, Maine lost to Colgate last week. BC should beat them. I know, I know I've already taken the L twice this, this season on picking BC, but it's Maine. I'll stick with, I think BC is going to win this game, but the offensive line, this is a game where they should find some success. And so practice this week for BC really, really needs to be, how do you pare this down? How do you make this simple for them? What, what can they do? What can't they do? that's been a lot so far and figuring out where they're at, you know, like what Halfley has to do something here. You can't go through the rest of the season, having Jakovic getting slammed on every other pass. He throws back in an, in a, in a run game that can't do anything, literally cannot do anything. And that's going to be where he's at. Like in order for NBC to take the next step anywhere, this offensive line needs to fi be fixed now they need to fix it now and to and no the way they're playing little steps isn't going to do it if they take a little step step and jacoby's getting hit 40 percent of the time they're still going to lose games they have two weeks before they take a big step up in difficulty when they play far state a team that when they had a good offensive line last year sm uh, smacked them in the mouth this year i mean they've got that kid from albany jared i think it's jared verse they are in some they are in some serious trouble if they cannot figure some things out here. Now, in a moment, we're going to come back and talk about the offensive line. And I'm going to tell you some things I think they could change and things that they could adjust to hopefully get themselves in position to 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 to, to improve a little bit. We'll get on to, into that in just a moment. Now, I want to tell you about our good friends over at Upside. From cringing at the pump to getting an op eye-opening check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting us all where it hurts, and it really hurts. That's why I started using Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With every purchase, I'm earning cash back thanks to Upside. To get started, download the free Upside app and use my promo code LOCKED and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Next, claim an offer for wherever you're using buying wherever you're buying on Upside. Check in at the business, pay as usual with the credit card, and get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards programs or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. So download the free Upside app today and use promo code LOCK to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more on Upside. AJ Black here. Thank you all for making Locked On Boston College your first listen every morning. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button right now. It'll get you all our latest updates. And I'm going to have live episodes after. I mean, there's going to be some night games coming up. we got Maine. I'm not going to go to that one. I'm going to watch it from home. And then the Florida State game. And both of those are night games. The Florida State game was just announced. There's going to be an 8 p.m. game on ACC Network. You can check that out. And we will be able to talk more about... Um, you know, some of the things that are going on there live on the YouTube channel. So make sure that you are subscribed today. All right. So what does Jeff Halfley do with this offensive line? You know, there, it, it, it to me, it, I don't want to sound hopeless, but they've, they've got to take some step and, and they've got to make some fixes. 
And the first question mark going forward is what to do with Jack Conley. Honestly, like I don't want to, I don't want to bash the kid. That's not my job, but he's not being successful. The offense is not being successful. At some point you have to make the tough moves. If he can't do what you need him to do, you have to move on. And he's been beat now. What? Five straight games. Halfley has, as I said in the first segment, has this kid's back. And, you know, I, I, I have to wonder if the, if the bigger issue is they don't have anyone to, to, to replace him. You look at the tackle situation and you have Trapillo who's out. Uh, hopefully he's back. And then where do you go from there? Do you, do you bring up a guy like Elijah Krasnovic who is just picking up football? Do you find someone else on your roster, whether it's, you know, Jude Bowery, push him over to tackle or move over. You know, if, if Kevin Klein is better, you know, push him over and then move Bowery to, to guard. What do you do here? If, if Conley is not the answer and and the statistics are showing he's not right now, does, is there a, a member on this roster that fits, that fixes this? And I'm not sure there is. And that is a scary proposition here, folks. I, I, I don't know. I don't see it there and that at that tackle position. And I think that's a big issue moving forward. The other question mark is guys like Drew Kendall. For, you know, as much as Jack Conley has been taking a lot of slack, Kendall is, is right almost just a little better than what he's been doing. You know, there's been issues with his assignments. We obviously had the missed snap against Rutgers. Is he going to be the answer this season? I think he will be, but how much longer do you wait? And what do you do if he's not ready? Do you put Jackson Ness in? Is he an upgrade or Dwayne Alec? You know, there's, there's other options there at center, but is Drew Kendall the answer? There's no easy answer there, folks. And then the depth players. This is the position where I'm like, what, what does BC do? What, where does BC go from here? Because we saw Nick Thomas and I do not want to bash Nick Thomas. This kid's a preferred walk on and got thrown out there against Virginia tech and their best defensive end who just won defensive end player of the week for the ACC. He, he should not have been put in that position. And especially he should not have been put in that position. And at times on a, on a one-on-one Island against this guy, this is a kid that, you know, just walked onto this team and, and he's asked, to, and I don't even think, I think he wasn't a def- offensive lineman before. I want to say he was something else. And they just switched his position. That's a that's an unenviable place to put him. And, I, I you know, I, I wonder, I, and, I, and my biggest question is, why is he being put out there when you have guys, and I mentioned him over and over during the summer, like guys like Jew Bowery or Otto Hess or Blair and Rostemi, there's guys out there that are on your depth chart that are scholarship players that you expect more from. Now, because this is college football, we all know how the half, you know, some coaches are, some of these guys could be dinged up. We just don't know about it. They just can't play. But if they are healthy, shouldn't they be higher on the depth chart at this point? Shouldn't we see an Otto Hess or, or a Drew Kendall, I'm not Drew Kendall, Jude Bowery, or someone like that, at especially at the guard position, if if they need that depth, you want to see those guys out there. But that's a bigger question for Halfley, right? So I'm moving forward here. I am looking and saying that there's some steps that this offense can offensive line can go. I'd love to see some of the other depth players get in there more often um, if they need them. Guys like Hess, guys like Bauer. I think that, you know, it sounds like they're they're more ready to play than maybe a Nick Thomas. But again, I'm not the staff, so maybe they see something they don't see. Um, but regardless, the question marks remain. The, the thoughts of where this offensive line can go are still concerning. There is, you can't imagine, I know Halfley made the comment saying, you know, we'll be good by week eight or nine. That's like three quarters of the way through the season. The season could be lost at that point. That you, I guess that's okay, but like, it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem okay to me. It, and I'm sure the fan base that have bought season tickets that wanted to see Phil Dracovic have one final go and see Zay Flowers have one more go want to hear that you know we're going to probably not make a bowl game because we don't have an offensive line. 
until like week eight or nine. That that's that's concerning to me. What do you think? Leave the thoughts in the comments as well. In our final segment, I'm gonna give I'm gonna wax poetic about what's going on here with this offensive line, and I'm gonna tell you my I think the biggest fa- the biggest fault I can find with Jeff Halfley's decision heading into the season. But before we do that, I want to tell you about our quest for 600. We are getting closer and closer every single day with subscribers here for locked on BC on YouTube. It makes a huge difference. And YouTube is the place to go for this. Uh, there are so many commenters that have joined up to talk about it. A lot of them are BC fans. Some of them are Rutgers and a smattering of Virginia tech. And I'm sure I'll get some Maine and if they exist or Florida state fans out there too. So if you're listening to this, go to locked on BC on YouTube and hit that subscribe button. It makes a big difference. We'll have some special uh, episodes again i said post game uh, episodes that are not up on the regular feed if you want them you have to go to youtube so just hit that subscribe button even if you don't listen to us on on youtube that subscription just hitting that makes a big difference for us so hit that right now um and hit some comments too if you have a question for me in the final segment i'd be happy to answer them i see quite a few of you out there listening right now all right so our final thought here, and this is the spot where I'm going to be as critical of the staff as uh, I have been in a long time. And I, you, many of you have said that I am an apologist for Jeff Halfley, that he smoothes the 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 media and massages, uh, you know, like, you know, uses his words to, to, to lull us all into a sense of uh, of oblivion while he makes poor choices. I'm not there yet, but. I think I can say, you know, while some of you guys are just done with him, which I think is is your choice, and that's fine. I'm not there yet. I can say I I like him, but I think what he did this offseason was a monumental mistake. What he didn't, uh, the fact that I, I get that Jeff Halfley does not want to live in the transfer portal. He said that a million times. He wants to develop his own guys. He wants to uh, bring in, you know, you see his guys get those starting reps, and I get that. But on the same, on the other hand, he has also hit the transfer portal in positions he knows he needs. As I said uh, in the post game wrap up show, he got Phil Dracovic because he knew he couldn't go into the season with no quarterback. He got Trey Berry because he needed a tight end last year. He got George Takis because he needed one this year. He got Jaden Woodbay because he needed a safety. He has hits the portal when he needs to. Now. The part I think I don't agree with him is obviously is that he didn't address the offensive line at all this off season. He, so we had the military bowl that never happened and ECU owns their rings and they love it, but BC didn't play there. The minute that game ended, he should have known within two or three weeks that Alec Lindstrom, Zion Johnson, Tyler Vrabel and Ben Petrullo are all gone, that you are only going to have uh, Christian mahogany remaining. Any coach should be able to say to that, that's a major issue going into next year. Even with Mahogany healthy, you needed to have some depth there. You had zero starts to put around him. And even if Mahogany played this year, you would have zero starts around him. And that's a big issue. So my question is, why did not, why did Halfley not go into the portal and hit harder? And I don't want to hear about NIL stuff. It has nothing to do with that. You, the guys that BC could attack are not guys that are going to need big NIL deals. Some people keep tweeting me this. I'm like, it has nothing to do with NIL. It has to do with the fact that they didn't go out there and really do much. You went, you know, there was like one or two guys that probably were, were higher end guys, but they ended up at like Alabama. And that has, again, has nothing to do with NIL. It's that they want to go win championships. That's, that's a whole other situation there. But the, uh, the, the transfer portal had 2000 plus players last season. And I think BC offered three or four offensive linemen total. And I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I'm going to tell you there's probably a couple hundred offensive linemen out there. I'm not sure how many had experience, but I'm sure BC could have made a bigger play on some of them. And what did they end up with when they had four open spots on their offensive line? They ended up with a, a transfer from Lehigh, who is just a nice depth player. He, I, I think he might even be a preferred walk-on. I'm not even sure he's a scholarship player. That I guess it's a it's it's a philosophy it's a philosophy choice by Jeff Affley here. This is how he thinks things through. I just don't agree with it at all. And I think yes, you go with you go with what you know and the people you know, unless there's a glaring issue. 
And having four offensive linemen that aren't ready to go or haven't been ready to go yet is that. Should have, in my opinion, been going into the season with Christian Mahogany, two transfers, probably a guard and a, tr- and a tackle or two tackles if you could get it, Drew Kendall and Ozzy Trapillo. That's it. That's what they should have done. And they, I think even if you lost Mahogany, you would have been in better shape. But instead, you go with the guys that you think can do it, and you I'm not sure if it was a misevaluation or it was um just hoping that they would, you know, um they would progress faster than they did. But whatever you chose, this is what we have now. You went in with a raw group looking at the schedule, and yeah, it's Rutgers is Rutgers, and I, I'm I've taken enough crap from Rutgers fans that I know it. That their off- defensive line is not bad. Virginia Tech's defensive line is not bad. You started off with two good, good-ish defensive lines against this offensive line, and you got hammered. That was a choice by the coaching staff, and a choice that is coming back to haunt Jeff Halfley. Now, different people are at different levels with this, but I, I, I still just remain that this was just a mi- big, big mistake by Halfley and his staff that he should have been able to see that there was, that these guys needed some assistance and you, you know what you do, you bring in two guys and you tell them to battle, you know what? And and that's how it goes in college football, right? That's what you want. So you could say to the, the Jack Conley's or the uh, Kevin Klein's or whoever, look, you have every chance to be the starter day one. We're going to bring in a few guys to to challenge you because we are, we need depth help here, and they may beat you, but you're going to have every chance to do it. And I think that's how you frame it. You don't have to say we only want our own guys to develop them. You do what college football coaches do, and you do what NFL coaches do with free agencies. You bring guys in and you have them compete. You don't have your guys that you have in now competing against freshmen and redshirt freshmen. Because that's that's not a, a true competition. You bring in some some guys that have some experience and have them challenge your guys and see who gets it right. And my final thought too, and I've seen people ripping on that on this too. I again, I as I just said, I have an issue with how he, he handled the transfer portal here. It was it was a golden opportunity to get infuse some talent when you needed it most, and he didn't. And that's his choice, and he's going to have to live by it. The piece that I've heard people rip in Halfley for, and I don't agree with, is that he can't he can't recruit offensive linemen. Okay, so if you're a big BC football fan, you know about BC's history on offensive linemen. Just look at the history of each of those guys, the guys that you guys love. They take two to three years to develop to where they are. They don't, for the most part, BC does not usually bring in true freshmen and have them compete immediately. You'll get a guy here or there, I'm sure. Um, and I'm sure you could, you're going to all bring up an example and that's fine. But for the most part, and this is something Adazio said, and he, I mean, he, you say what you will about Adazio. He's a good offensive line coach. It takes a couple of years for these guys to develop. They need to get into college shape. They need to learn a complex system. That's very different than when they had in high school. You can't just throw them out there. That's that. And, and then say, okay, well, they are not ready. Then you're a failure as a coach, Jeff Affley. That's not how it works. You, they need, you know, BC did not recruit anyone in the class of 2020. I they have Kevin Klein. I think he was 2020, but the guys that Halfley had are on year two. This is year two for them. So I don't think it's fair to say that they are, are he's failed there because that means they've been here for two years. Most guys take three, almost four years to, to really develop. Um, and that's just my thoughts there. And again, I said, there's a few that'll that'll tr- trickle in that can do that. I think Jude Bowery is going to be one of those guys in a, in a little while, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him by the end of the year. But I don't think it's fair as a critique for Halfley to say, yeah, he he hasn't done that. So this is AJ Black. Make sure you hit that subscribe button right now on Locked On BC. And thank you all for listening. Follow me on Twitter at AJ Black underscore BC. I am um, I am doing this five days a week. I am the only podcast that does this five days a week here at locked on bc and i really do appreciate doing all this um and i love talking to each and every one of you about boston college sports so thank you all for listening we'll see you again soon cheers